When George Washington held the presidential office, the country grappled with immigration. So this was a topic at our founding, and it's a topic that we still debate today. George Washington is the father of a nation of immigrants. An immigrant would have to wait for two years before they be could become a citizen. They had to live in one place for a year. Uh, and essentially, at any common law court of record, uh, they show up with a character witness, they could become citizens. But by any standard of the age, this is a remarkably liberal and extraordinarily progressive notion of how you create new citizens. It's not only a nation of immigrants in Washington time, it's a nation of expatriates. It's a nation of immigrants with an E. All the American revolutionaries renounced their allegiance to Britain and the requiring of these new citizens the same renunciation. By limiting citizenship in the new nation to aliens who were, quote, free white males of, quote, good moral character, these British aliens and children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren of aliens built into one of its first laws, that contradictory relationship between character and biology that continues to mark our current debates. This policy clearly established that those who were not free, white, and male could not be full citizens. The Immigration Act of 1917 created an Asiatic Barred Zone Act, extending exclusion of immigration from almost all of Asia. Racial science also separated the white races of Northern and Western Europe from the darker white races from Southern and Eastern Europe. The intent was to specifically ensure that new immigrants resembled racially the older stock of US residents. This form of second-class citizenship is also obvious in the history of Japanese-American internment during World War II, where one-third of those sent to camps were U.S.-born citizens, incarcerated because of their race and not their loyalty or their character. Estimated now to encompass as many as 11 million individuals living in the U.S. permanently, the undocumented have become an ever-present part of U.S. society. This year, we, we commemorate the 30th, the 30th anniversary of the last attempt to change the calculus of immigration policy in this country substantially. The 1986 Immigration Reform and Control Act, what has replaced discussions of how to integrate immigrants successfully into U.S. society is increased racialized surveillance and criminalization of Latin American immigrants. We've seen the proliferation of detention centers and ICE raids, new technologies to militarize the border, and a growing presence of uncertain legality of existence, constant fear of deportation by many, and families that exist with members stretching from U.S. citizens by birth to legal residents to undocumented immigrants, all within the same family. These families speak to the new realities of liminal citizenship in cities like Los Angeles. George Washington set in motion a divide of the American population through, immigration, uh, through immigrant integration and separation, legal distinctions, and naturalization policy that has continued for generations. I see students like this every day at USC that can make a difference in the world and help create this new nation that we so desperately need.